Wrestling and Padres here. It's 2018, which means it's time to be social again, Scotty and Jay. You got to talk to people. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm busy right now. Okay, Just, I, got, please. I got things the better to do. Okay. Like, be what by if, myself. What if I gave you something to be social? No more uh, dry cookies, please. No, what are you talking? Cookies are great no matter whether they're dry or mm-hmm. moist. Anyways, mm-hmm. GameboxMonthly.com. It's real simple. Go there. Use the code DRAGON. You will get a discount. Incredible tabletop games sent right to your front door. You're mm-hmm. going to have a great time with people. Oh, what if like- you don't have a door, though? They'll deliver it right to whatever opening in your residence you'd like to use. I have a 1975 bead curtain. It's going right to your bead curtain. Go to GameboxMonthly.com. Use the code DRAGON. Get that discount. Gamebox Monthly. Rediscover social. Wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You got me mad now. No matter where in the world you're joining us from, we welcome you to the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast right here on Dragon Wagon Radio. Follow us at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. Of course, follow Dragon Wagon at its Dragon Wagon on all social media platforms. And of course, check out our Patreon.com slash Compadres if you want to support the show. We got a jam-packed show, y'all. There's going to be so much going on. Everybody gets these hands! Everyone's getting these hands right now. You can follow me at Jay Quasto. Johnny LaQuasto here with you. To my right, he is the host of the Trusty Sidekick Podcast. You see him all the time on the Collider Schmodon and, and very soon a whole bunch of other Collider projects, which is wonderful. You follow him everywhere at Mr. Jay Washington. He's Jay Washington. Hey, buddy. I am very upset because as of right now, Twitter has banned my me from tweeting for the next six days. That's ridiculous. Can, because, we, can yeah. we get into it? Yes, we can. Please. So I had to go in. Let's I'm just call it for what it is. I got into it with some Trump supporters, and one was a black dude. And so he tried to be one of those Captain Saver uh, supporters, and I let him have it. And so then a bunch of other literally just white guys and girls jumped in, patting him on the head like a good poodle. Oh boy. And so I let them have it. And so next thing I know, Twitter told me I was banned for seven days. And I was like, yo. Here's my thing. You weren't using vulgar language. I'm no. Sure. So I don't know how... It must have been just like they probably do all the time, whoever these people are. They probably went and somehow logged a complaint. That's all they do is they can. So they'll complain. And then Twitter automatically will suspend someone without even thinking about it. Well, and because, of course, it's and I'm just going to be realistic. It was the white guys and girls who complain because the black dude ain't complaining unless he was that really sensitive. But he probably was, too. But they complain. So I get blocked for seven days. So uh, if you are listening to this, go on a Twitter spree and tell Twitter release my account because I got a lot of things to say. And clearly I can't say it to none of these punk. Mo- but nonetheless, <laughs> yep. you know, it, that was that was the most frustrating thing because it was like, yo. So I got a lawyer buddy right now, handle my lawyer handling that right now because uh, I'm a personality. I need my social media. But other than that, man, I'm good, man. Trying to stay busy and working just nonstop. I got about six shots of espresso over here. There you go. You and I are about to go do something right after this. Yeah, we're going to tape some great stuff. I can't tell people we're going to tape yet. So yeah. We're going to tape some We're not allowed stuff. to say? I don't think we're allowed to say we're taping it today. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do that. So I got six shots of espresso, and I'm here with you guys. And so it's a great Wednesday. So you can't even log on to your Twitter. No, no. I can. So here's what I can do. I can log on to my Twitter. Uh-huh. I can scroll all through Twitter and see my news feed, everybody that I follow. And I can only DM my followers. So I am not about to DM 6,900 people and say, yo, <laughs> look, I need y'all to go ahead and uh, dude, whoever got you suspended. Everybody gets these hands. I want to give them my hands, man, get so all, bad. Yo, I wish you could see these hands. I got field yeah. slave hands. I want them to catch these hands, like man, something serious. That's ridiculous, man. Well, <laughs> I apologize for that, and uh, on behalf of, of all white people, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I knew that was um, coming up the way he was doing it. <laughs> and on behalf of white, no, I mean, look, it's like, we, it's it's not, not, we can be the worst. I get it. We can not, totally you know, be the I, worst. And I won't even say that. It's just that, you know, when you argue, I, I'll get into political debates every now and then right. on Twitter. And you should be allowed to get into arguments. It's politics. It's all, like, politics is bullshit to begin with. You should yeah. be able to argue without people getting butt hurt and complaining. Man, they get all of their feelings Of course hurt. they do, because they know they're wrong most of the time. And the first thing they do oh look at somebody being triggered i said no you got the wrong one here like and then what here's the thing i got banned for two other tweets and the tweet where i told the black dude who tried to come at me i was like yo you fucking with the right one right now you can get this you can get this work fam like, gets 
<laughs> Literally, I told them that ain't even a tweet they but they banned me from. You know, banned me for. Yeah. If they didn't hit me for that one, I'd be like, you know what? I earned He's all of hot. that. He's getting hot. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, I earned all of that banning from sure, that You know sure. what I'm saying? But I didn't get what that tweet. It was you old coon ass shoe shuffling Sambo ass. Yeah. Hey, ball stepping fetching it. Is that really what you tweeted? Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's probably what it was. But I said it to a black now, dude. I know a lot of those accounts are actually bots. Yes, and I is this dude a real dude? Do you think? Uh, it's supposedly a black dude. Yeah, supposedly okay. a real dude. Okay, but it's like I was tweeting it to a black again, and I think that was another thing that had me upset. It's a black dude tweeting it to a black dude. Right. If it was like it was like interracial in any way, shape, form, or fashion, I could understand that. Mm-hmm. But like, yo, this is something going in the hood right now, and uh, Twitter just being very discriminatory. Next well, question. Twitter's had a lot of issues, anyways. Yeah. So Scotty Narver, unfortunately, like last minute, had a, a project come up to where he could not get up to record with us this week. But, uh, you know, follow him, of course, at Scott Narver. And the good news is, as far as we know, Dale Rutledge will be joining us later on in the show. He is 17 hours ahead right now in Japan in the future. So it's Thursday right now for him as we record. But I do believe he's going to join us. If that doesn't happen, disregard these past couple of sentences. But I think he (laughs) is going to join us. But the best part about doing the show here at Dragon Wagon is not only is the creator of the studio and the producer of our show – uh, probably, I think pro wrestling might be his favorite thing on earth. In his apartment, he has what's called a brawlway, which is a whole hallway dedicated to just pro wrestling uh, moments that yes. have been historical and incredible. And so he's joining us on the show today. He also created the opening music intro, as well as a This Week in Wrestling intro, and a bunch of other things. You follow him everywhere at Liquid Jake. He is Jake Lloyd. I did it, you guys. Hey, buddy. <laughs> to pull the curtain back, I've been here for every recording, mining, yeah. mining the ones and twos on the board for mm-hmm. what 12 13 episodes now mm-hmm. and uh i went out i saw i Tanya, and i thought you know what i know i know <laughs> how to get out. i know how to i know how to get scotty out of here <laughs> So I, 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 I Tanya Harding Scotty, and now I get to be on a show. To be fair, we're, he's, he's got very thin knees. It doesn't take much. Yeah, you can hit him with a pencil, and he'll yeah. probably go. And out. we're all in a tw- we're all in a chat uh, group chat together. So when Scotty was like, "I can't make it," Jake was like, "Well, here I go, I'm in." Mean. <laughs> so thoughts on I Tanya, by the way? I, oh, everyone, it was fantastic! Really? Like, See, the I, mother is God. the wor- the mother I, is the biggest villain in wait, history. I, I don't you didn't like get it. it. No, here's my thing. Ugh. Just the story of it. Yeah. Okay. How did we make him? Okay. From what I understand, Tanya Harding's idiot husband hired a fat man to hit Nancy right. Kerrigan in the back of the knee. How is that a two-hour okay, movie? Okay, wait, wait. I, I, did you miss the whole part where the movie itself, the narrative movie, was based solely off of the interviews given and not off of anything that has been proven or factual? Yes, it's solely off so, interviews. So all of those interviews that you saw, those were shot with the actual people, <laughs> the real people, and then reacted by the cast. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they, they built that story about their specific story. So that wasn't... We still don't know if that's how it happened. So this movie isn't necessarily a factual. No, no. no it's based, and they said that the first thing was like this movie is based solely on the a likely cat- ridiculous the- stories told in those interviews. Yep. Oh, uh, okay. it's it was amazing. It, it was better than I anticipated by a long shot. That's what everyone keeps um, telling me. I saw Jumanji last week. And I actually enjoyed the fun. He- I enjoyed the heck out of fun. it. Liked it better than Star I Wars. S- I saw Proud Mary this weekend. Oh, it- oh. yo! It's shout getting- out to Taraji P Henson. It's getting bad reviews though. I but- mean, it, it's it's pro- partly in the editing. Yeah, the editing is kind of ch- you can see bad editing. Well, it, it reminds me just the trailer alone. I'm like, oh, it's a new Foxy Brown. Yeah, basically, but okay. she's a badass, and people don't want to get Taraji a credit. Now, so. You know, the only thing that kind of pulled me out of Itanya, if I'm being honest, was some really bad visual effects, some really bad face replacements during the the figure skating. <sighs> I was really kind of bummed. You know, they 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 didn't quite go like you know full uh, um, first Avenger with it. Like uh, the quality of the head replacement wasn't always there. Fair but enough. other than that, man, I, I you didn't like it. I'm so very surprised. I know I haven't seen it. I oh, just oh, oh, I did the confused. whole the fact they made a movie out of it. I'm just like, no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I still haven't seen Star Wars or Thor. Right, well, you, but I was in the mood. I wanted to laugh, so I went and saw Jumanji. But I still have to see <laughs> Star Wars and Thor. I certainly do. Well, so. uh, let's get this show started. Yeah, right. Welcome, <laughs> to, welcome to movies Johnny should have seen. Yep, which is a long list. We can have a scroll of all the movies I should have seen. <sighs> but since I'm flying to Argentina next week, I'm going to catch up on all of them. Wow, did you just drop that like you just really ball? You know I'm flying to Argentina. Well, no, uh, look, I'm working. Yeah, slide I'm, it in there. I'm, I'm I mean, getting, everyone's going to get these shows. You know? Can't. Slamcast this was, news. This was a mistake. <laughs> Slamcast Slam news. <laughs> All right, we're unfortunately starting off with some injury news. Everyone knows at this point, uh, Paige, apparently, even though we saw her on Raw, which is great seeing her, it looks like her 
in ring career is is possibly finished. That's they tragic. They didn't mention it on the show. They mentioned a neck injury, but obviously it's too early to really tell. Um, but yeah, they're comparing it similar to how why Edge had to retire. Yeah, the neck is really delicate. Her neck already kept her out for a year, and it's just uh, when you already have an injury there, you got to be really careful that you don't do anything worse to it. And apparently, that kick she took to the head really gave people a lot of scares. But well, they, they, WWE definitively did say she's, she's done, done in our company. Yeah, right? they said you, your in ring career with us is done. So that's they official. Did. Okay, that's official. Oh, no, I was asking you. No, that, that's what they said. Yeah, okay. With her, they've told her with with the WWE, her in ring career is done. So again, if she chooses to risk it, uh, she can go, she can go else. else. But if you watch the video from where it started with the match, the dark match, uh, the house show, excuse me, with her and tagging, I believe with Natty or whatnot, but it was her and Sasha in the ring. Right. And Sasha gives her a kick and it's supposed to be to like the solar plexus, to your shoulder area. Sure. What, and it did not. And it went up higher. Eey. And then so when it went up higher, her neck jerked and then her head hit the mat. Ooh. And when Paige gets up, you can you see can, her hands right. flop because she's lo- you watch her lose her feeling, lose her right. feeling and sensation in her extremities. Yeah. And she's shaking her hands and they're oh. dead weight. And she's trying to stand up and she can't. And so the ref at first is like, okay, maybe she's just stunned a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little stinger. She's telling him, I can't feel anything. Mm. So that's when he throws the X up, and they call the match. Scary. Very. Mm. You know, it's, it's very sad. And again, my heart goes out to her because she had a, had a very promising career with the WWE. But then to give her a second chance to bring her right, back I know. in the midst of everything she had been with, yeah. been through. But also, it could be a blessing in disguise. I hate to say it that way. Because if we look at an edge... Granted, his injury took him out of in-ring competition. But here's the thing with Edge, though. He was he was near the end of his career. Yeah, he had already done this is, everything. I mean, I mean granted, Paige yes, I, and I understand the time difference, right. but Paige is young. Yeah, she's like, what, 19? 20, <laughs> she's 25, <laughs> yeah, she's 25, 25 26. Baby. So Paige is young, so there are a plethora of options available for her. Sure. And that's why I use like how Edge was easily able to transition into film. Granted, it's been sci-fi movies and stuff like that on the History Channel, but the <laughs> doors have been opening. Yeah. And Paige having that face, that, that look, that distinguishing look she can use yeah. can open up a lot of doors for her. Again, she has the movie coming out with The Rock where they tell the story of her mother. Right. Yep. So who knows what that leads to going further down well, the line. Well, luckily for her, too, though, she's already a really good personality and a really good talker. Right. So she'll probably linger around as just the leader of that group for a while. Yeah, you think? I mean, she's got her fans love her. She's too I mean, popular to, to let go. She's worth. Obviously, you want to keep her there because she could just become a really powerful female manager, which the only one in WWE right now is Lena Vega at NXT. So I think she has a lot of options there. She could become a general manager. Hell, she could do commentary. Corey, yeah, she can go the Corey Graves route. I mean, I wonder uh, would they let her. I, I, now, that'd be interesting because we've never heard any of the women on commentary more than a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, it would be nice, which that's what I I'm mean. Hoping. I mean, not since Lita. Lita was true. Yeah, not since Lita. But, yeah. but I would like to hear, I would like to, you know, let's go forward towards, since she can't be in the Rumble, right. mm-hmm. put her on commentary for the for the women's Rumble. Yeah. yeah. Would be uh, smart. Which, by the way, I mean, I, that's definitive. She's definitely not in the Rumble. They're not no, going to let her even go in, not even to make an appearance no. and not take a bump. No. It's one of those big time risks that yeah. you do not want to. To, and to their credit, uh, and to their credit, that's the smart that thing to do. Heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, just put yourself in her position of like this incredible iconic moment this you know record-breaking moment is about to happen this history unless moment. they let her go in and uh, eliminate herself that, that's what i was thinking like mm-hmm. get put her in a low risk spot or put her no at risk one, spot. put her at one right yeah. put her at one let her go in and like and elim- give a wave, salute give yeah. a salute and for, for just for her in ring exactly. career just to say like i was in the wrong that would be nice to do that that's if they want to admit it publicly they haven't done oh, that right, right yeah i right. mean yeah they haven't On openly air. fully fully admitted it so that's kind of the I mean, yeah, God, what a heartbreaker. <sighs> and Samoa Joe has also been pulled from the Rumble as well uh, with his injury. So he's which one? Now, what does he have again? That I honestly, I'm not even sure. I think Joe. You know, I know he has his knees and his elbows constantly wrapped up. Uh, I remember he was out for a while. I think Joe's body has taken this again. That's a road warrior. Yep, that's a man that's been nonstop for almost 20 years. His body needs to rest, and unfortunately. This is his job. This yeah. is what pays the bills. This is what feeds the family. It's just his body is like, yo, we can't. I think when it comes down to it with, you know, if he with house shows and stuff, he's just going to have to have a much lighter workload. And I think it's Samoa Joe. He can get it. Yeah. It, you know, it's one of those guys that Vince was like, yo, I got to have him. 
But his also his current injury is not a long term thing. It's no. it's unfortunate because the rumble's soon, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not long term. No, yeah. it's a couple. It's not months, a Dean right? Ambrose. Right. Time. It's not a right. Dean Ambrose joint right. where he's out yeah. almost nine months. Right for the year. It's just bad timing, is what it was. Yeah, which is crazy because I mean. It, I, I'm not saying he would have won the Rumble, but in my opinion, he would have been one of the favorites. Yeah, he was He was on my short list. And Paige was on my short list for the women's as well. Like, yeah. those are two guys who are both, you know, again, I don't think either one of them was going to win it, but they were on that, you know, they were in my final four bracket or whatever. I'm still sure. giving it to Mickey James. Really? Yeah, you think they're going to go that way? I still I still see it. You, If she's going to go out, mm. I mean, I, I, they've I, kept pushing her to get this title. I would be thrilled. I so don't think I. they're going to do it. But I would be thrilled if it happens. Because I hope to God Ronda Rousey don't get it. No. I think if Ronda's in the Rumble. Oh, she's in it for I, sure. I, I think there's there's going to be some kind of feud that's set up with her being in the Rumble as she gets eliminated. I mean, something. I think if she's in the Rumble, it's going to... If she's in the Rumble early on, yeah. then number 30 is going to end up being Stephanie. And they're going to set up her and Stephanie at Mania. Ooh. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, that's. I think that's I can, a now, given. That, that's they're a not going to put Rousey against any of the actual women. Yeah, because that, that was the thing that was teased two years ago yeah. that we were supposed to get the following year yeah. and we didn't get. Have but Rock who, rock in her corner yeah. and, and Triple H. But and Rousey and Stephanie, like... Wh- we were supposed to get that. Remember, yeah. they set it up at Mania when yeah, they were... but uh, here's the thing. What, how is it going to be different than Rousey versus any of the women? I mean, like, they're not going to do that to any of their... I mean, they might. And, like, Stephanie, like, hasn't been, there with and Stephanie hasn't been in the ring for a very long right. time. Yeah. That's they, a money draw. Yeah. Mm. Let's just be... Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey you is remember, a... Did you remember those clips of Stephanie boxing that went online a couple years back? Uh-huh. She, she was a beast. No, have, she, yeah. Have you ever seen her workout she does with Triple H? No. At midnight? Like, they train at midnight when the shows are done. Mm. They fly their trainer out. So... And she was so really they, good. They, in so they the, go to the gym at, at Ice Cream O'Clock is what you're telling me. Uh-huh. And then they actually yeah. do work. They do yeah. work. That's work. Ice Cream O'Clock at midnight, though. So I don't know what they're doing. They're not doing it. Yeah. No, actually, and, and if you recall a couple of years ago when she faced one of the Bellas, I want to say was it SummerSlam? She was really good in that match, too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just feel like Rousey versus Stephanie. I don't know how you build Stephanie up to be a credible opponent to someone like Ronda Rousey. I, but it's a I, WWE I mean, match. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, that's how. I mean, yeah. you're right, but also... How do you build anybody to be a credible well, threat to Well, because they're active competitors in the ring. That's fair. I mean, I get that. Um, I don't know. If they do it, it's going to be Charlotte, you think? And then they're going to... They're not going to... You bet not, Barry. You that's what I'm saying. Up. They're not going to... like Nobody that they're willing to let get beat that's, by Ronda yeah, Rousey is willing to be in the solo match and against tentatively, ten- Here's the problem, too. Tentatively, I've heard rumor. Ronda is supposed to be the female... The woman version of Brock. Right. Which I do not want to see that. No, she's because well, she's got to be good. Yeah, first. exactly. Well, arguably Brock isn't that Ar- <laughs> great in the ring. Well, actually, uh, no, no, no. Initial Brock Lesnar, yeah. that came up from OVW, yeah. can work. Yeah, of course. But new age Brock, who yeah. like I got twelve to fifteen days with y'all a year. You enjoy yeah. this. That's a different Brock. That dude is winded by the time he gets. To I the still apron. think this Brock is fantastic. I mean, I mean it's I a love, be- it's what, because he yeah. knows how to. They play it off very well. But they're saying like I don't you don't feed Oscar to her because no. if Oscar takes the loss from her, yeah. that kill. That's like yo, you can't do anything else with Oscar. Right. Um, here's another question: Have they announced? Is it going back to when the original split happened, where it's just the winner gets to face the champion of their choosing, no, or, their or is it their show? It's their brand. Oh. Unless you're Cena, you could face it, right? Of course. Yeah, unless you're the free agent. But yeah, it's the you, free so agent. now they're back to what. Whoever wins, right. you get the champ of your oh, brand. Yeah. Which is weird because, you know, you imagine we're going to have surprises who don't belong to either brand. Exactly. So that's one of those things, too. Um, we will see. I mean, Beth Phoenix did commentary for the Mixed Match Challenge. So that's Ooh. a bit of a hint, I would think. I, I would, would love, love to see the Glamazon uh, back love in. Her back. For sure. Just to watch the pose with the crown. I just want to. All go. right. How, how angry or excited would you be if Santina made an appearance? That, that's been done. <laughs> I love, I love, hey, I love me some comedy. That's been done. Also, how awful would WWE seem if they bring back their, James Ellsworth? No, 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 no. In their first ever Money in the Bank women's ladder match, a man was involved. And then in their first women's match, a man is also I don't think involved. They, I don't think no. they're going to make that same mistake twice. Not going to happen. You ain't going to do that twice. Moving on, uh, Pro Wrestling Insider does their top 500 every year. Oh. Uh, the wrestler of the year, no, no surprise here, AJ Styles. He's everyone's wrestler of the year. Uh, top woman was Asuka and top tag team Young Bucks. You can't really argue... I mean, maybe you could say Asuka, maybe Charlotte. There's a, there's that, that's a bit debatable. I can argue with tag team. Or, really? Mm-hmm. Who? I could give it to, to this is going to sound really crazy to a lot of people who are listening. Mm-hmm. 
the bar has been amazing this yeah. year. Oh, uh, for sure. Also, the, I think the Usos. And the Usos. Yeah. Yeah. I would give it to the Usos more than the bar. I, I think it's just because, well, number one, the Bucks, they have created everything they do or touch turns to gold right, right now. Right. They have created such a buzz around themselves all by themselves without the help of you know, any mass, like, yeah, they work for multiple different companies, yeah. but all the interest they get is generated by themselves. They're the ultimate self starter. And honestly, I, I have seen me, I can probably count on two hands how many Bucks matches I've seen. Yet, when people talk about them, I'm still like, oh, the Bucks? Like, yeah. they do have that level of excitement. <clears throat> and yeah. I know for a fact, I don't know them personally. I know they're really good dudes. Yo, like I, a lot of my colleagues work I with them. I know them personally. Matt and Nick are some of the two of the coolest dudes yeah. down to earth. We worked and done many shows together. So, again, I, I, I take both yeah. what you guys say. Yes, but as far as if we're going off that, yeah, everything they touch turns to gold. But we cannot discredit what the Usos have put in of course this not. past year. Were I there, love Usos. Were there anybody? Were are any of those three? Were they also there last year? AJ Oscar and the Bucks. Like, is, is there any order? returning champs? That so I don't. I mean, AJ could be number one every year. Yeah, I don't uh, think nobody's going to argue that. Right. Throughout the episode, I could actually try. Well, to actually, there are some people who will argue it should be Kenny Omega sometimes. Fair, right? There are people who will argue it should be Kenny Omega. I don't think Kenny Omega has hit one in a while. But people can say it's interchangeable between Omega right. and AJ Styles. Nobody else you can put up there. I need to pick up one of those, those PWI 500s. I remember when I was like 18, I, every, I would get those every year, and I'd scroll through them. It's and look crazy. The guys you know, and then, yeah. Okay, number one last year was Okada, and number two okay. is AJ Styles. Okay. Oh, so AJ Three, Clint. Kevin Owens. Omega was number five. So okay, there you go. I mean, pretty close there. And let's see if 2018, if they have the whole list. I'm not quite sure if they do. Uh, no, I think you have to buy. Yeah, you have to course. buy it. Okay, Which it's it. really intense. Those guys put a lot. Yeah. I, I I know Mike Johnson. Crazy. I don't know um Meltzer, but I know Mike Johnson, and they put so much work into that. Boy, I know and so many workers who get pissed when the <laughs> PWI. Oh, sure. Yo, they I get mean, pissed look, when the PWI five hundred come out. I, get, I understand. They get gypped. Yeah, they'd be like, "Yo, how am I not?" I'm like, "Yo, well, you got to take it for what it is." Same thing for comedy. Like I saw this one um, well-known website came out with their top ten albums of the year, and of course, half of them are famous comics, and I get it. And then there's other albums that are they're fine, but it's like, like you get a little, you know, offended where it's mm. like I I put six months of recording into right. my album. I know right. my album's more creative than, in my opinion, most other albums that came out this year. Mm. I ain't on that top ten. But it is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's no matter what it is. When anytime you see a list, right. you're gonna get you're <laughs> yeah. gonna get pissed yeah. off. Oh, man, I used to they used to do these lists back in Chicago for the top comics in Chicago, and I'd be seeing the list and I'd be like, I'm not even on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, I've done shows with ninety five percent of the people on these lists who cannot follow me on stage. How is it I'm not on this list above them or just, on this list at all? It but it it's subjective and whatnot. So yeah. Well, speaking of the Bucks and being a good dude, Cody Rhodes, another one, um, you know, like I said, worked with him before. He's the best. They finally decided they're doing their all-in event on September 1st. I don't believe they've released the venue, but a number of people are on board. It's the Bucks. It's Cody. It's Kenny Omega. It's Marty Skrull. I believe um, Tessa Blanchard is now involved. And who knows who else? But this is exciting stuff. Yeah, only, I think. only this group could get all these names on and literally have no idea where it's going to take place. Yes. Like they haven't the slightest idea. This and could I'm, end up at like a BW3 and they're just going to be like, well, we're going to roll with it. I'm telling you, I think it's I looked at the all in Twitter account is already up to like 30,000 followers. Of course it is. I'm telling you, this is going to draw if their goal was ten thousand dollars. I'm mean, not ten thousand dollars, ten thousand people. It's drawing that. Absolutely, goddamn, lutely it is. And, and what's gonna be, what's gonna happen is once they do it, not if, once they do it, how much you want to bet Vince McMahon is gonna start throwing crazy money? Sure, because Cody Rhodes has gone on record and said, "I'm making more money now than I ever made with the WWE." He's gone on record saying that. And the Bucks I, are making a hell of a living. They make a hell of how much, and they've turned down Vince McMahon several times. Right. Guarantee you, Vince McMahon gonna back a truck up. <laughs> He'll back a truck because Omega has turned him down. All these big names so far have turned him down. You better be careful backing a truck up. Braun Strowman <laughs> might just dump it over. He might flip it up. But yeah, but Vince, I don't like scarves. I, I don't know why the scarves are in the truck. But He's so angry at trucks. I don't want to get it. I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, but you're look, totally right. He's, Vince, yeah. Vince, if that thing draws, when it draws successfully, Vince is like, yo, I don't know. I, I don't have, they, they drew $10,000, 10,000 people mm-hmm. without a John Cena without a AJ Styles, without a Kevin Owens, without a... It's because these guys... Well, Cody obviously was with right, WWE yeah. a long time, but these guys... Cody doesn't draw 10,000 himself. I know, but I... No, but together yeah. as a team, these are, you know, these guys and girls that are going to be involved in the show, they are 
they're just genuine and and fans no matter what genre whether it's wrestling or sports or podcasting yeah. if you're genuine and you're passionate about what you love people will come and i oh, feel absolutely. like that's what's going on absolutely i i'm 100 percent in agreement with you but I, and I want this. I want to. We, we've said it here several times. I want this to, to succeed. Yeah. I want this to be the best it can I, be. Hell. Like, I just want to see what, like I said, I just want to see. I'm what sure they're going to get, I'm, I'm sure they're going to get famous commentators, but hell, if they don't, if they don't, if they want, I'm, I'm in. You put, he's put, I'm you heard it here, in. folks. What happens? If you want me to do interviews, commentary, Johnny I will Lacosto, be putting six, his name into the race. I want to do back, lead. I don't and care. I will do backstage segments. I don't care. What happens if they get Jim Ross? They probably will. Yeah, I mean that seems because like he's, he's you know it wouldn't surprise me at all. That which I mean that would solidify them to have that legendary oh, commentator. They're already solidified. I mean yeah. I, I I get that. I'm just saying I'm like pushing the levels higher and there's, higher. There, there's a lot of big name people they can get as far anyone who's obviously not with WWE. They can get any big name commentator. Whether it's they can get Matt Stryker, they can probably yeah. get Kevin Kelly. I mean anyone who's not contractually. What about Mike Tanay? Sure. There, there's so many good Bring people they can Tony get. Tony Schiavone. Like I said, I've, I've done shows with Cody, but it's like, I know they're going to get big names. Tony Schiavone. He, yes. Just I'm, say the name. Tony Schiavone. Just say it slow. No, you Schiavone. Don't, there you go. You don't understand. You're breaking his heart right now, Jay. He just, he wants it to be him. Don't no, say I, the look, names of other comedy oh, yeah, you have a No, no, no. Yeah, Come I'm on. Sorry. Hey, I'm realistic. You're, you're talking about, you're talking about okay, all these a, guys. A, Johnny LaQuasta. See, that sounds sexy, though. Perfect hairline. You see? Mildly thinning. Okay. No, see, I was being nice. No, you can't. I won't. I'll be honest. Okay, mildly my ass, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get these hands. <laughs> Johnny, you can't turn your head in a certain way with the light because I see through your hair. No, nope, no. Nope, my hair looks dope right now. No, right here. I can see my, your skin. Hey, shut All up, right. man. All right. I got, I got All a haircut right. last week. I'm ready for this wedding on Friday. I'm going to look real good. Okay? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's right no i'm realistic i'm just saying it would be fun to be part of that event that's yeah yeah right. uh well speaking of signings though candace LeRae, war machine and ricochet have all officially signed with wwe they've actually gone public with it nice and this is all great news ricochet is one of the most talented people on the planet Ooh. war machine i find interesting because there's already sanity and there's yeah. already bludgeon brothers they have all kind of sort of similar looks mm -hmm. uh but hey they're all they're they're all incredibly talented and which is great and then candace LeRae is someone I've known since I started in wrestling seven and a half years ago. She was one of the very, very original uh, people with Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. There's still a promo I have somewhere on my computer. It might still live online somewhere. Where she literally grabbed my ear in, like she pulled me into frame. She was a heel at the time. Uh -huh. And she didn't realize how hard she was. She she almost tore my earlobe. That, that mom twist? It's very yeah, method. That she like almost tore my earlobe off. And it was a really funny promo because yeah. I was like, be like, I did. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I'm really happy for her. She absolutely deserves it. She has done crazy stuff. Like there's been matches with her and Joey Ryan where she's, she's oh, yeah. bloody and and it's really cool to see. And and that's another person who's genuine and passionate. Yeah. And because of that, all the fans are already behind her. You can't deny it. How how do I say this? How far does Ricochet really go? You know, I let's say, just be real. I, mean, I would say they've they have surprised me multiple times already with people who came from the Indies where I were like, listen, this guy's great in the Indies, but he just doesn't have that that right. machine, that WWE machine style. And they've surprised me with a couple guys past. Then they've also dropped the ball with a lot of guys like what Shinsuke Makamura doing right now. No, no that's you know, not like, that's not even Indies. Uh, Apollo Cruz. Yeah, absolutely. they brought him in. He was hyped up. We haven't seen Leo Rush yet since he ran his mouth. No, he's he was on NXT this past okay. week. He he got crushed by um um Lars Sullivan. Yeah, and yeah. He's actually I think they're using the whole he had a promo afterwards online where he talked about how nothing has gone according to plan. They're kind of playing oh, into the fact that yeah, he did the losing some dumb streak thing. Okay. But but Ricochet, I'm sorry, but he's I loved and I love Trevor to death from I, from my IWA Mid South oh. days. Trevor is my homie. He's undeniable. It's just the question is Will he be Ricochet or will they repackage him? Um, I certainly don't think 205 Live is going to be the thing. I think he's got to be, you know, probably NXT. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go to Is it solo in it? Just stay NXT. Ricochet's the kind of guy that you can totally see being NXT champion without a doubt. But I'm saying, do you keep, not, that's the thing too. Do you keep certain guys? I understand that the purpose of NXT is to bring them up to the main roster, whether it be Raw or SmackDown. But there are certain people who just work right. on NXT. Yeah. And it's not anything against them, but do you keep somebody like a Ricochet on NXT? I mean, I think it all depends on kind of what Ricochet wants, because I'm sure that there are some guys that oh, are yeah. like, that are like, you know what? 
I'll go live in Tampa, or, you know, or Orlando, or wherever. I'll live in, in Florida and I'll stay there and I'll be the guy that's constantly putting over the new talent, but still has a name. Like, if that's what they want, but I don't think that people go to NXT without seeing that big picture in the horizon. Well, you know? also, I, I think it's because of the fact that you look at the current champion. Him and Andrade would have a ridiculous match, just like yeah. him and Gargano are going to have a ridiculous match. Oh, him and Gargano are going to tear the roof off. Right. And so you could essentially, just kind of like the way Adam Cole has been, in a way, you could get him right into a title picture, depending on when you want him to debut. It's not like he has to spend a lot of time training. He, he knows what yeah, he knows. Yeah. He, he, he can do things that out there. humans can't do. So it just depends on, on how they want to go with but it. But I'm just saying that's, that's not the issue. I can see you can put him in a million different things. I see things. him maybe in the Rumble. That's that's a potential. But they, I, my thing is, does he stay or does he go up to... I get the main roster will accept him for a quick amount of time. We know what's going to happen. Yeah. But there are some people, like we've said, and it's not saying it's just him. It's just some people the WWE drops the ball on and some people the full universe does not accept. Sure. Well, I mean, people were wondering about AJ Styles and remember the reaction yeah. he got at the Rumble. I, I'm not saying Ricochet is going to get the AJ Styles kind of reaction, mm-hmm. but... He people will go nuts for him. I think I'm I just, still I just surprised want, every time I see AJ holding a WWE. I just title. don't want nobody. Think, I don't want anybody thinking I'm being negative. I'm just putting it off yeah, from all perspectives. It. Totally. Because again, AJ Styles was just. I mean, of course his pop was going because you never thought you would see AJ Styles that we know today. Sure. Right. In a WWE ring because of course AJ had been there before. Yep. But we we never thought we would see that AJ Styles there. So that's why that pop was surreal. You know. But Ricochet is another guy where he has. He has made the world knows this dude right. beyond a shadow of a doubt. I just want to make sure, like, I just want, I, if that makes sense, if he's there, he can be able to be who he is to the fullest extent and not be a watered down version. Right? Yeah, of course. Got to believe it. Okay. Uh, well, moving on to Impact, what a interesting week of tapings they had, which we'll get to. But officially now, EC3, Lashley, and Laurel Van Ness have all left Impact Wrestling, and they are now free to do whatever they like, and uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. I want Lashley to show up at the Rumble, and I want Lashley to win the Rumble, and I want to see Lashley and Lesnar. And wow, yes, that's what I would. How like. do you really feel? I love. I, I Lashley really? has he grown. Never worked. Lashley has grown so much during his time I, in Impact. Let me ask you this question: uh, Do you think that younger people, newer fans, slash people who just never watch TNA know or care who Lashley um, is? That's a good question. Enough but to put him up against Just Brock. look at Lashley and Lesnar face off, and that's a dream match. I get me. it. I, I'm, with, I'm with Jake, yeah, though. Honestly, this new generation doesn't know who that is. I so have to remind myself what Lashley looks like. Well, uh, he needs another defining moment besides helping Donald Trump shave Vince's hair. Yes, in right. WWE. Right. True. And I just think that him and Lesnar, it's they were they, their careers never matched up, and this is the last one of the few right. times it could it's match possible, up. Yeah. Now, do you're right? It probably won't happen. It, it might be Reigns, it might be Cena, but I'm just saying that match would intrigue me the most. Now, I might be in the minority, but I think Lashley and Lesnar would be incredible. And Lashley has become. I know that the mo on him back in the day was that oh he never talks, he can now, and and that's I think that would be an incredible match. I mean, again, I uh, I'm I wouldn't turn it off, but I just I care so little about Lashley. I think mm. I feel like he's been again. I'm not a big TNA guy. I'm, I'm one of those guys who I pop in and out like every couple months, sure. you know, and I'll watch it for a month and then I'll kind of fall out of it. And I feel like I've never I've never seen a Lashley man event and been like, wow, like I remember this. All right, we'll see. But I don't know. And EC3 rumors are, you know, going back to WWE and Laurel Van Ness. Uh, does not he, quite sure what her plan does is. Does he come back as uh, Bate, Bateman? What was his name? Ba- Justin Bateman? <sighs> uh, Derek. Um, I don't know, <laughs> man, because, you know, it, I, he might just EC3 is he's yeah, that's very a, smartly transitioned into being called that and not Ethan Carter. Right. Because the last thing they're going to do is bring in a Carter. Right. Of course. Character. Exactly. But EC3 is a, you know. I think that that might actually work. Uh, mean Gene is officially going to be at Raw 25. So how about hey. that? Along with uh, Jericho, apparently. Yeah. I mean, of course, again, he's got to be. He debuted well, Jericho him. said he Jericho said that he talked to Vince about the whole and they're cool with it, right? Yeah. And so he's cool. So of course, Jericho can come right back for, you know, drink it in, man. We, yeah, I mean, we I think you guys have said it multiple times on the show. It's a running uh, sentence that people consistently say is Jericho could do anything he wants. Yes, and I think that's Carte just launch. where it goes. And I'm so glad I actually get to see Raw 25 before I fly out on Tuesday, which we got to figure. So we should maybe record late Monday night or something so I can do the show. I don't know. I don't want to miss. You don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. We'll talk about it later. I mean, if we need to, if we need to record a random episode and then just get it, it wouldn't to be Jake. random. It'd be after I mean, it would be Raw, the, Raw tw- the official Raw twenty five episode. I mean, if you want, that's up to Jake. If he's, we'll a talk. I mean, it it airs East Coast time, right? 
It would be over uh, 8 p.m. I uh, mean, Pacific. We could just watch it live and then record right afterwards if you want to. I'm, I'm game for it. Okay, we'll have to talk about that. Uh, the Mix Match Challenge drew 136 live viewers on Facebook Watch, so that's a pretty good number. 136? I'm sorry, 136,000. <laughs> oh, that's my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> 136 K. Thought- Happy Rusev Day, everybody. Happy Rusev Day. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. I got lightheaded. I got I- so lightheaded. Can we- <laughs> my favorite my favorite was the so that's really good. I thought it was just being really sarcastic afterwards. No, I thought that was, uh, 136 would be one of my videos. I mean, <laughs> they drew 136,000 live viewers for the first episode. And it was pretty cool. You had Byron and Renee at ringside. Nice. Um, you had Beth Phoenix on commentary as well. And so, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. And it, it did have the feel of a more fun, like at a house show. Some goofy right. Stuff it wasn't. It wasn't as like hard. This is what's happening right now in WWE. It didn't take itself too serious. Yeah, and no. they, they weren't re- consistently reminding you of the current storyline. No, nah, there was, was some fun stuff. Sasha fun. and Finn Balor defeated Natalia and Shinsuke Nakamura. So, Which we knew that was going to happen. Big surprise. <laughs> yes. And lastly, John Cena is... Lashley? Nope, not we already Lashley. already talked about him. We already talked about him. You're right. Uh, John Lashley. Cena will be hosting the Kids' Choice Awards again. So of course. Why don't they just say, John Cena is your host for the next 10 years? They could. I mean, as long as he's on WWE TV. I think that's what helps him be the host. Yeah, he's, yeah. Ne- he's never leaving. That. So he's- it's like, as long as he le- once he leaves the WWE, the dude from movies... He until the videos come out ten years from now, he's just Hulk Hogan now. Like that's yeah, this just is absolute. This I mean, is, he yes. is like until the John Cena Molina tape comes out. Yeah, or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Slamcast news. All right, moving on. So it's official. Goldberg will be inducted into the Hall of Fame for 2018. I think it's a no-brainer, but someone, one of our listeners, did actually send me a message, and I, I found it interesting. So I forgot I would bring this up as a. You know, point of conversation. Hit us. He says, "Does Goldberg really deserve nope. to no. be in the WWE? Next, Absolutely not. Next question. Wow. Absolutely not. I, I could not disagree more. Absolutely not. Are Goldberg you, is for why? Why does he need? What? Because I want to run through this. Why does he need to be literally? But and I think me and Jay, what Jake would agree? What has he done? I to, mean, literally to deserve to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. He makes sense." To put eyes on WrestleMania weekend, mm-hmm. like from but, a business but don't standpoint, forget, at this but point, WWE cares? Hall of Fame includes all genres of, of wrestling because yeah. they put in people that never wrestled for WWE before. Sure, they wrestle. They put in guys from the AWA, from Mid South, from not, Memphis. They were legends in the game. And sure, also, so did, is Goldberg. Though. Also, they did not go into WrestleMania 20 in Madison Square Garden and have a match to stink up the joint on purpose. Yeah, um, well, I don't know if they. It was on purpose. It has been known that that match was horrible on purpose because neither one of them cared. Well, that's true. And also, his. I get you're gonna go. <laughs> if we're gonna count, go. Oh. Had Goldberg never had his WWE runs or this second run? Not the universe without top, the second run. I don't the think sec- it would have happened. Yeah, what? I, yes, it would have. It could have because he was he was world heavyweight champion. Then he had a nice little WWE run until WrestleMania, which again I don't. That kills it for me. But I just don't think he's. Oh, I don't know. I just See, don't. here's the thing. This is the comparison that I make, and this is my argument for him. It, look, by no means is anyone saying that Goldberg is AJ Styles. That's a fact. Goldberg isn't Gilberg. No, for but, Christ's sake. Oh, sakes. okay. <laughs> but my point is, he he had a he he, he was very impactful Absolutely. in WCW. It was a big deal when he came to WWE. It was a big deal when he came back. I relate him a little bit to Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis did not have a long playing career. Yet he's still in the Hall of Fame because he had a couple. He had a small, a short run with the Broncos where he was by far the best running back in football, and injuries took him out of the game. Sure, still made the Hall of Fame. To me, Goldberg is kind of like that, and that's why to me it's a no brainer. He's in the Hall of Fame. I mean, again, it's a no brainer. You know, the question that was posed was, does he deserve to be in the Hall of right. Fame? Right, and, and that's why I brought it up because I thought it was a, a good Chris and, uh, listener, Chris so, Gentry. Good question. So, and so I was like, I'll bring it up to you guys. So, uh, you said his name was Chris? Chris Gentry. He's Chris a, Gentry. become a friend, but yeah, he's also been a longtime listener. And he said, hey, me, me and my son are discussing this. Does he deserve it? And in my answer was, yeah, hell yes, he does. He didn't think so. And I guess you guys yeah. would agree well, with okay, him. Okay, well, let me, let, me, let me change my answer then. Um, sure, he deserves to, but he's probably like number 100 on the list of people who deserve to go before him, in my opinion. Okay. Like, like I mean, sure, yeah, I he, deserves, he deserves to be, but you know, 
so does Mark Henry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so do all of these other people. Also, why are we putting them in now? It, be- well, because it's it's no, no. timing. He just had a run very recently. Yeah. He's, gonna, he's gonna stop showing up to events, so they might as well get it in, get the money. It doesn't you know. matter. Get him. You he's put him still in. in the, he's still in the video game. There's still Owen Hart still isn't in. Yeah. Well. I mean, again, he, there's about a hundred people. I'm sure, All right? That you but can I'm name. just saying he can go in next year. Mm-hmm. Also, he doesn't need to go in. Well, don't forget, this is only the first guy. I know, but he, that, that, that's because he's head of. So the first guy is always head of the class. He's head though. of the class, isn't it? That yeah, usually where they maybe. work. He's yeah. the head of the class. He's the he's, the, he's, he's like he's the, the star. He's the star, and it's it's just to me, it's that you could have put this man in next year. But let it wait. You just wanted to try to. There's nothing to really fully ride off of. There's no need for him to go in right now. Mm-hmm. When Eddie Guerrero died, yes, he should go. Edge, he went because Edge had to retire. Right. Edge had put his work in for that company. He goes in. And it was like a very fitting timing for the timing. whole thing that happened. Yes, yeah. it was timing. Everybody that's going in, and I get, yeah, Sting went in, and Sting went in questionably now based on the fact that they jobbed that man out throughout the entire his right. entire WWE tenure. Mm. If you put Sting, they could have put Sting straight in and never put him in a match. I mean, I'd yeah. have been okay with that. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. I never liked WCW. I was the WWF at the time kid, um, and I hated everything that had to do with WCW. I was uh, on the wrong side of that short piece of history and then ultimately on the right one. Yeah. But um, I never liked Sting. I always I hated the makeup. I hated the crow ripoff. I hated when he before that. I never liked him when he was announced for the Hall of Fame. I went, oh, yeah, no shit. He's Sting. Like, despite the fact that I don't like him and I never really was like, I never got it. I never, whatever reason, mm-hmm. got the sting but thing. He's a legend. Yeah, yeah of course. I, I get it. Yeah, he's a, um, completely, absolutely should be in the Hall of Fame. But with Goldberg, I'm just sort of like, nah, all right, I guess he's going in this year. Like, I, I don't know. It seems to me like it's just, you know what? He's still around. People remember him from a couple years ago. Let's throw his music up. Let's people do the chant. Let's throw some sparklers on stage at the Hall of Fame. And then, uh, you know, nice. and we, then hopefully let's let's look at the silver lining. Maybe we won't have to see him ever again. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm really surprised. If, if Goldberg goes in, uh-huh. does Taker go in this year? No, no. Taker's going to be head of class for his year. Okay, he's got to be head of class. Oh, for his absolutely. Year. Okay, yeah. yeah, which is true. He has to be. Yeah. So okay. I mean, Fair. Taker should Taker should be head. He of might be the, wrestling. We don't yeah. know. Yeah, he might be at Mania wrestling. This is true. We might find. We'll find. It's this probably going to be Taker Ronda Rousey for all we know. Yeah. Okay. What's the next news? <laughs> because that was the biggest bullshit. Bull- bull- <laughs> um, <laughs> well, next. Everybody gets these hands. So Raw, oh. it, it went off the air in very strange fashion. But Braun Strowman, just when we, just when we thought he couldn't uh, be more amazing in all of our hearts. You know what? Can I say something? Yes. I. Um, we've brought up nothing but people that I don't like. And now people are going to be like, Hey, this Jake guy doesn't like any wrestlers. That's not true. I usually like the guys everybody hates. But with that said, I've never liked Braun Strowman since the day he started in his terrible name, which essentially is just brawny strong man. Come on. You could have come up with something better than that. Yes, it is. Um, I, I don't like his face. I don't, uh, he's never, look? his face is angelic. He looks, he looks like ogre from revenge of the nerds. I'm yeah. not afraid of his face. He literally does. <laughs> it looks like, he ogre. looks like ogre got on steroids. Um, um, sorry. That's but, a scary face to me I, with all of the things with like the, the, the pushing over the the box trucks and then the dumpsters and all these things I've I've never got it and then last week with the freaking grappling hook I was like what is happening I have to say they had the man push over a Mack truck yes and I and my heart grew three times that day good because it's about time you jump on board that was yep. hilarious i know and amazing and i'm slow and also i love the fact that he destroyed the production truck yeah got everybody out of there yet the camera was still able to cut well to him outside the production truck very good work by very that very guy good was. rogue camera guy you know and, what uh, stroman uh stroman won me over a little bit this week i'm telling you and, and just he adds in what what's great about Strowman is he can destroy everything he wants. Right. But then he adds in those just one or two one liners every the, single time that are just and, amazing. And you know what? The In my opinion, and I know a lot of people don't like this, but the more that they can sort of let him be funny, mm-hmm. I think is the better that character is going to be. Um, because the just like I'm angry and I'm strong and, uh, you know, I want competition. It gets old very quickly. It gives him more depth. And, and to give him a little sense of humor when he did the chocolate cake. That was great, too. I, I yes. was like, that, we need that. I want more of those moments, more scarves. And the cake guy was frozen solid. That was delightful. <laughs> him tossing all, uh, all the people in the hallway just tossing work. Yeah. <laughs> and poor Hawkins goes through a table. Yeah. Well, <sighs> at least he got TV time. Yeah, he sure did. But I, I don't know. I just think that everything he's doing right now is so entertaining and it's so different. Hey, yeah. 
It was a good week. It was a good week for him. It sure for was. Sure. And then uh, Raw went off the air in strange fashion. Um, you know, Balor Club just kind of being in the ring. I was waiting. I was waiting for like Strowman to come back and beat everyone up yeah, again, but something. he didn't. But actually, can we rewind there too? Because you glossed over that that main event, which was a you know a rematch of the first ever Universal Championship. Yeah, um, good match. Which was it was a good match, and uh, we saw a freaking curb stomp. Yeah, out of Seth Rollins. Everybody was like, "Wait, what?" Which I was under the assumption that was banned. It was it, on the band moves it, list. It is on the band moves list. So, do you guys think that they just went like the the punk Cena route with the pile driver and just like screw it, we want to throw this in the match, so we're gonna we're we'll gonna take pay the, fine. the fine? You think probably so? Or do you think that they took that move off of the band list for, I, this, I gotta for say these two? It's no longer banned, I guess. It, I mean, right? We, it'll have we'll have to see his next match. Right? Yeah, of course. Let's we, let's not call it it's uh, off the list because I, I will say this: whatever the Falcon Arrow or the Frog Splash, whatever he's been doing since not doing the pedigree is not working because clearly I can't even remember what it and is. And both of them do the damn sling blade. They need to right. pick one of these to pick who's going to do it. Right. Um, well, also, he was using Kenny Omega's knee thing right. as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. The running. See, the running. I can't even remember what it is. That's how yeah. that's how forgettable it is. Um, uh, but that that match ended, yeah, I feel like maybe it just ended too soon. And it seemed like they had a couple extra moments of camera time that they I didn't realize know. they had. I was really expecting Stroman to come back one more time because, you know, he the moment Angle fired him, you're just like, oh, right. boy, and this is going to get good. And also, didn't uh, Rollins' music stop playing at the end of Raw? Like, didn't it get to the end and it was dead silent by the time it went off air? <sighs> and it was just him and the friggin' uh, the, the good boys or the good brothers? I don't know. I don't, yeah, it I, was think, a bizarre, I think you're right. It was really awkward. It was. It was it was, it was a very weird way to go off the air, but, but that seemed to be the theme this week. Speaking of strange, uh, so SmackDown Live, I I had a hard time catching up with everything because I I just got back from Catalina, um, the wedding, mm. I'm emceeing. It was a you know a bachelor thing, and so like I, the Wi Fi is terrible there. My phone was barely working, and so I was like rushing to get back into it. So I, I you know went over SmackDown, and it, you very, heard it, you heard it here first, uh, kids. Uh, Johnny does not make. Watching wrestling to do the show a priority. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and no, put that out there. No, it's a priority when I have uh, when I have the time. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, we can catch you up. We have a new United States champion. You. Yes, that was the. All right, I can't wrap my head around the decision making in this episode. <laughs> uh, much like you said, Raw started off with a big Strowman thing that you assumed was going to end with a big Strowman thing, like uh-huh. some sort of arc for the episode. SmackDown started with a really fantastic New Day, you know, punking out. Yeah. Uh, the the modern, modern day, day Mah- Maharaja. That's it. Raja. Yeah. Um, just to have Xavier beat, which I kind of thought we saw coming. But they announced early in the episode that like, hey, guys, now that U.S. title match is not going to take place at Rumble, it's going to take place next week on SmackDown. Wh- which the, that was surprising to start. So OK, so yeah. then, but then <laughs> it went from next week to tonight I would, just simply because rude was like let's do it right now but the the the, the decision was so strange because rude is all beat up and then daniel bryan's like yeah we'll do it tonight <laughs> what are they trying to play in that like daniel bryan is making weird decisions yes, like that's exactly what okay, they're doing but then but then hmm. I, again I, I i speak like i've been on the show for the past weeks because i've been here but the truth is of course i've just been around so uh, listeners that i'm not crazy uh, you, we've repeatedly said for weeks well ziggler's going to be involved in the end of this yeah i thought that changed a whole and, and th- the smackdown ends with new champion bobby Roode and nothing happening it was i was the most convinced bizarre. ziggler was going to cause a double dq right. or like a no contest and that way they can continue Ziggler's to push it evidently something had either ziggler really is not he's really gone for the moment I, I thought that he was going to come out just during that match and just take his title back and then leave. And yeah. then that way the match ends, but there's no title to award. <laughs> hey, that would be hilarious. That's how, that's how I would have wrote He don't it. do anything. Just hop the barricade yeah. take the, and just and walk, leave. walk, not even run out. Oh, yeah. Just gingerly well, walk out. They're still wrestling for the title. So, you know. Yeah. Well, either way, Bobby Roode uh, now has his first, first main singles, roster title. Yeah. So, hey, you can't argue with that. Bobby Roode is... is He's great. I mean, he's, I mean, it it was smart of them to not have that match at Rumble because it's not a Rumble quality match, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, not that they didn't put not that they didn't put on a good show, but no, I think Jinder Jimmy, Mahal versus Bobby Roode is not a pay per view quality. Yeah, yeah. Match. They, like, and the audience wasn't the audience was only even halfway behind it for most of it. But the decision to tell us early on that the match was going to be on next week and then still just make it this week anyway. You could have omitted that first piece of information and we would have been just as surprised. Very surprising. Very bizarre. Sure. Well, before we move on, it's now time we could actually Skype Dale. So we should do hey. that right now. 
It is now time to introduce not a lost compadre, but he is 17 hours in the future right now in Japan. He is residing there for the next couple of months, and it's so wonderful to have him back on the show. I haven't actually spoken to him in person in well over a week. You follow him everywhere at The Walking Dale. He is the Traveling Dale. He is the Flying Dale. He is the Japanese-speaking Dale. He is Dale Rutledge. Hey, buddy. What's going on? So tell us, catch us up. How's life? How's everything? Where are you? Are you in Osaka? <clears throat> no, I'm in Tokyo. Uh, things are good. Uh, New Japan was a blast. I'm actually heading to see some sumo wrestling tournament. You know, I love a tournament, so I'm headed to a sumo tournament this evening. Oh, that's so cool. That's I've never dope. really seen it. Yeah, have you guys ever really seen it? I don't. I haven't really seen it. I've just seen it in movies, but it looked like it's a lot of fun and a lot of gambling at the same time. I just like the outfits. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hopefully the big show shows up. I think he's at all of them, right? Well, <laughs> well, that's cool. Getting the culture in, man. I like that. How's everything going uh, language wise? You're you're getting the getting it back a little bit. Oh man, it's hard as shit. Okay, I uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, I mean, it's way better using it every single day is making a big difference. Uh, but I mean, it's just so hard because everything is backwards. Like the way they structure a sentence is backwards and. You know, it's not Latin based, so every word sounds weird. So I just have to come up with tricks to remember everything. But you know, it's it's going good. I'm I'm digging it and I'm I'm learning stuff, even though if it's just a little bit every day. I haven't watched zero wrestling this whole time though, unfortunately. Which is good. We're gonna catch you up. Now I have to ask, are you the tallest person on public transportation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually I went to a concert the other day and I had to stand in the back and it, it felt like I was front row. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How was the concert? Was it K? What, what kind of music was it? Uh, so it was a Japanese, like, uh, I guess pop band. I don't know what you would call it, but they do a lot of like anime theme songs. Oh, um, but yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Japanese crowds do this weird thing where they don't really dance. They at the chorus of every song, they, they kind of like throw up their hand in like an open, like a, a, a five, like all the fingers are extended and they're like, ee! And they just kind of bop that up and down, but only during the course. And when the course is over, they put their hand down. Wow. All right. Very, very structured fun here. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, I mean, look, the wrestling audiences are the most well-behaved audiences in the world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it comes true. Unless Kenny Omega's in there and then everybody's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, since you're a little behind, we're going to catch you up. Uh, the Royal Rumble is less than two weeks away, right? So we're, right. we're just going to give you the rundown and, and catch you up on what's been going on. Oh, by the way, Braun Strowman uh, pushed over a semi truck last night. Oh, duh, as he should. Yes. And, and the week before, he used a grappling hook to bring down an entire, uh, what would you call it? Uh, scaffolding. scaffolding. Yeah, he pulled down a scaffolding on, on top of Kane and Brock Lesnar with a grappling hook because he's, he's Batman Braun. A grappling hook? Mm-hmm. I, t- I said the exact same thing. Like, who had a grappling hook on standby? I was like, Braun can use this. <laughs> yep. So he is amazing. Is that what they do? What they used to, uh, don't they use those to drag Johnny off stage? Uh, it, does, it takes a lot less than no, that. I think you're thinking of an old-timey giant cane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's funny. And then he also gave us a great quote like this. Everybody gets these hands! <laughs> it's so good. So anyways, Royal Rumble. We have 30 women in their match, 30 men in their match. Uh, we have Lesnar, Strowman, and Kane for the Universal Championship triple threat. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay, there's your reaction. Kane's there. definitely winning now. Oh, for sure. Oh. <laughs> Kane is getting the clean pin, one, two, three, dead center of the ring. And then he's going to be mayor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm really sad about that I did hear about is Paige. I'm so oh, upset yeah. about Paige. Yeah. yeah. She was on Raw last night with Absolution, but they, they mentioned her neck injury, but they haven't said publicly on television that her in-ring career is over. But we were talking about earlier on the show already that, you know, She's so talented and has such a good personality and is such a good talker. She could be a very powerful manager. She could do commentary. I mean, she could be very beneficial, you know, to the company for a long time. Yeah, still makes me want to cry, though. <laughs> you can, you can Dude, Bill sounded so sad right there. Still makes you want to cry. Oh. I, I felt sad for you. I felt them feelings. Yeah, man. Not easy. <laughs> Especially right after she came back. We didn't really get to even revel in her being here again. Well, that's the problem. You have that, ne- that neck injury that she had was was severe. I mean, it kept her out for a year. And so, 
unfortunately, you know, bad timing, bad luck, bad positioning, and and you know it happened. But we didn't we didn't really talk about it earlier. But uh, have you seen like all the shade that's being thrown Sasha's way because of it? She been catching all this heat, boy. Yeah. On oh, Twitter, man. she. And it's one of those things where, I mean, it's the nature of the business, obviously, like you don't want anybody to get hurt. And, you know, yeah, I feel bad for Sasha, too, because she's obviously not probably not going to be enjoying living with this for the rest of her life. It's a bad situation all the way around. That that is for sure. And it's like so ridiculous. Like, are they going to blame whoever had Edge's last match exactly. before he hurt his <laughs> neck? You know, it's like it's so stupid to think that Paige has been wrestling since she was a freaking embryo. Yeah. So I don't see why <laughs> they think that this is the thing that did it. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. W- were they called tag matches when her mom was wrestling pregnant with her? Was it technically a, a handicap? <laughs> yeah, I think it was it's a tornado. Tornado, tornado handicap. Two people tag. in the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on SmackDown, Dale, we got AJ Styles taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in a handicap match for the WWE Championship. And it's not a triple threat. Yes, I am super into that. Yeah. So the question, of course, is uh, if KO and Zayn win, they are co-champions. This seems to be what they're alluding to. Or do they fight to see who's champion? I don't know. I think they've dictated that they want to be co-champions. Yeah, let's see how that goes and holds up. It worked for Lay Cool. They kind of did. Did you really bring up Lay Cool? You know what? I said Lay Cool. My Lord. I love that reference. That's, That's fantastic. Awesome. I, hope, I hope they do it, though. It, it, it's it's interesting. It, when there's two main belts like they have now, it's an interesting way to have storylines yeah. develop. I mean, they and have who to. Who would do ever it. think that Sam Zayn? Sami Zayn would ever be even a co-champ. So I'm, I'm just excited for the chance of him doing that. And I feel it's inevitable. I feel like with the story they've built, they absolutely have to do that because we need to see what that looks like. Like yeah. we need, you've teased it. You have to give it to us. You have to show us what co-champion Sami Zayn and, uh, and KO looks like because it's going to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. And Dale, they also have the yep movement. Yep. And so they've been doing that as well. Oh yeah. I read something online about that. What, what is the yep movement? Is that, is that is them saying yep? Yep. I couldn't understand what that exactly. was. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're just mocking Daniel Bryan essentially. I guess it's for Galvis. What's that? <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's as pretty much as obvious as it looks online. Mm-hmm. And they've they've taken uh, the yes T-shirts and they've taped P's over the S's. The whole nine. <laughs> pretty good stuff. Those two. What <laughs> those those crazy kids. We. Uh, I feel like I feel like they need like an '80s style sitcom theme song for the, just the two of them every time they're oh, on TV. Totally, they should something like Step by Step or something. Too many cooks. Yeah, like like, exactly. Too many KOs. Uh, we got the Usos taking on Shelton Benjamin, Chad Gable, two out of three falls match. Uh, so that's going on. Please let Shelton Benjamin super kick Chad Gable finally. I think that might be one of those ones that doesn't make it to the to the main card. Maybe I, I bet you it don't make it I to bet the you main a show. It's a kickoff show, or yep. if, it's the, or if it's a week before, <laughs> makes sense. I think it's a big match, but and on SmackDown, Dale, they actually had a tournament for the U.S. title because Ziggler won it, and then just dropped it in the ring and left the company. So they did a tournament, and last night, it was very confusing on SmackDown. They had the two semifinal matches. They had Jinder Mahal and Xavier Woods and Bobby Roode and Mojo Rawley. And then the the plan was, initially, the title match would be at the Royal Rumble. Then last night, they go, nope, it's going to be next week. And then Jinder wins, Bobby Roode wins, and then the Singh brothers attack Bobby Roode, and then Daniel Bryan says, you know what? The title match is going to be tonight. And so they had it last night. Both guys wrestled twice, and Bobby Roode is the new U.S. champion. Oh. <laughs> Yay. That's the appropriate response. Yeah. It's such a bizarre <laughs> It's such a bizarre booking and a bizarre episode of SmackDown. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, no, so, no Ziggler, no Ziggler, no thank you. It's a t-shirt. What's going on? So is Ziggler, did Ziggler really leave or what's the deal? I don't understand. I think nobody knows right now. Everybody's like, is he really? I mean, I think is- we were all expecting him to, sh- to make an appearance at the title match because it's, that's sort of the natural progression of the story, I would assume, but maybe not. Maybe they're going to crown a new champion and then have him come back next year and do the CM Punk where they've got two U.S. champions. And he's like, Yo, I'm the real if champion. They re- if they rehash that storyline. You know I they love qu- to do that. Well, he, Oh, my God. They love doing it. Ziggler has never won the Rumble, and him and AJ would tear it up. At oh, me. that would be so good. So a lot of options there. So, Dale, one thing you're going to want to watch next Monday is the Raw 25th anniversary. Listen to some of the names. That are now gonna, what's that? I'm going to do that. I can't do that. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that? They got Raw TV. There's a Raw here. You could watch on the interwebs. Listen. 
the WWE Network, nine ninety nine a month. I heard it's only nine ninety nine a month, and uh, it goes to it's broadcast to over like eighty countries. I've seen the commercials. Mm-hmm. Do they put Raw on the network? No, they sure don't. But yeah, highlights you, you can find online. Anyway, some of the guests: Stone Cold, Boogeyman, Godfather, Jericho, Brother Love, Teddy Long, Million Dollar Man, John Laurinaitis, Sergeant Slaughter. A lot of names, and it's going to be recording from That's two different spots. Apparently, DX, The Undertaker. That- New Japan Pro Wrestling's Chris Jericho? He, is, he will be on the show, yes. And, you know, he's about the only person who's acclimated even better to Japan than you have, I guess. He's, he's doing pretty well. Hey. Yeah, he's doing all right. Doing all right. Yes, he is. And so that's pretty much got you caught up. Uh, you know, it's going to be definitely a four-hour show on the 28th, uh, you know, with the, the two rumbles happening. And so uh, that's that, I think we caught you up pretty well. Yeah, I appreciate the update because I really only have Twitter, so I just hear a lot of mean things oh, about wait, you wrestling. For- all the- you forgot to tell them the most important thing. Oh, yeah. uh, Nia Jax and Enzo Amore are kind of like a thing now. Oh, they're kind of doing Oh, yeah, they're kind of uh, doing it. They're doing it now. Well, that's uh, strong words, Jay. Is, is, is that something that Vince just thinks is funny? Like, put the little guy with the big girl. You that's know exactly what it is. <laughs> I don't know, but he's still cruiserweight champ as well. Oh, well, that's great, too. Yeah. And, uh, oh, well. <laughs> And it, how I really feel. And Impact had their live tapings this past week, and oh lordy, did a lot happen. Um, and I, I can't even say these are spoilers because Impact's Twitter was tweeting all of this stuff out. I guess their thought process is: look, people are going to know anyway because right. the internet. We might as well just get action with these posts, yeah, get ahead of it, and get people so, to watch it. Like I know Scotty was mad in our group text because I mentioned one thing that happened, and Scotty was mad. I was like, dude. The company itself is tweeting this out. It wasn't me stealing from the internet. I, right. It happened to pop up on my Twitter. I was like, oh, wow, this happened. Yeah, and I had, before you even texted it, I saw it on my Twitter feed as well. Because it's, because we follow, we were all follow the same people. And, sure. you know. I also think Scotty likes to just get mad at you. Oh, that's a fair point. Uh, very fair point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, some people left. Some people are arrived. Um, there's a brand new uh, global champion after the tapings. Uh, so yeah, a lot's going on. Is that, is that off? The, oh, oh, are we not talking about it? Because I think I saw who it was. <laughs> oh no, you did. I mean, look, <laughs> I love that we were all like really careful about it, and we were all kind of dancing yeah. around it. And then he just look, dumps it. I look at it this way: if they tweeted it out, I don't feel like we're throwing spoilers out there because they have. A, it should have been slammed. Austin news. Aries has been saying it. Austin Aries was on every single social media thing talking about it. Sure, and then Brian Cage showed up as well. So there's a, a, a lot going on there. Um, Lashley has left. Uh, EC3 has left. Laura Van Ness. Oh, has left. EC3 left. Yes. Oh. Yep. Yep. So. Do we have we heard any rumor? I mean, I guess the uh, number one immediate rumor is X person is heading to WWE. But have we heard anything about any of these people? Nah, it, it's all internet stuff. Who really knows? I mean, Ricochet is officially signed. <laughs> Candice LeRae is officially signed. <laughs> And War Machine has officially that's, signed. That should be the tagline to this show. It's internet stuff. Who really knows? Yeah. Who really knows? I mean, anybody's sure. Anything. Yeah. I mean, I feel like EC3 is at such a stage that he could really oh, yeah. excel now in WWE. Absolutely. Let's hope so. And uh, yeah, very happy for Candice, though. We already talked about that. And Ricochet, you know, excited to see what happens with him. And War Machine, you know, they could, uh, they could face off against Sanity in a... Longer beard match, and it could. Uh, <laughs> so. I don't care about no war machine, but uh, Candice LeRae, what took them so long to pull the trigger on her? That seems so weird. I don't know, but it's official and very, very happy about it. Good for her. Good for her. Yeah. Well, dude, we're so glad we finally got to join. You, you, you joined us from Japan. We'll try to work it out for next week. We might be recording at a different time, so I'll let you know. We, um, we literally had your face put on milk cartons and shipped yeah. to Tokyo because we didn't know where you were. <laughs> I was opening up fortune like, cookies, hoping for clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got the milk and like, I don't know, it looks like every white person. We can't tell the guy. Uh, he tall. That's all we know. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that guy at a concert. Find him there. He was he, hanging he, out he in the back. For some reason, he didn't put his hand up during the choruses. I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> he was hanging out in the back like a weirdo. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for joining us, buddy. Feel free to tell the audience anything you want to tell them. Uh, wh- whatever you want to go for it. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you can follow my Japanese adventures on Twitter and uh, Instagram. It's the best way to keep up with me. I will be going to the J Cup when it heads here 
in March. Uh, I just found out that it'll uh, be here for a couple of rounds while I'm here. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but I don't know anybody that lives here, so I'll probably go by myself. That's okay. Uh, maybe Paige with me. All right. She'll be free at that point. <laughs> there you go. Well, good deal. Well, buddy, great having you on the show. And obviously, we'll try to figure out something, hopefully every week, to where we can you know, always do this. So. All right. Sounds good, y'all. Thanks for giving me a shout. Konnichiwa. Later. Sayonara. <laughs> Dale Rutledge, everyone. Good having him back on the show. Uh, wow. What an episode we've had. Like I said, uh, you know, a lot went down with the impact tapings. This week's episode, there's going to be a barbed wire, no ropes match. LAX and OV, those matches always scare the crap out of me. It's hard for me to watch. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting to see, uh, to say the least. Uh, other than that... <laughs> Good episode as, as Dale's officially off of Skype. <laughs> we are at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. Uh, I'm at Jay Quasto. Jay Washington, why don't you put yourself over? Find me Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Mr. Jay Washington, M R J A Y W A S H I N G T O N. Make sure you go on Twitter and hashtag free Jay Washington, man. Twitter's banned me for the next six days man, and should. it's hurting my soul. You know what, Twitter? You just made the list! <laughs> made everybody's list yeah. and get me out there and also make sure you check out the trusty psychic podcast we got a bunch of information on your marvel and dc tv shows and movies and now i gotta go get dressed and put on a suit man i'm gonna go with you i already have half my suit on <laughs> his birthday suit jake lloyd hey follow me at liquid jake on twitter and jake lloyd on instagram and if you enjoy podcasts that are a little bit less wrestling related uh please check out elaborate it's a show that i host it's a freeform conversational podcast uh in which i sit down with guests and sort of Figure out what makes them tick. It's not therapy, but it is therapeutic. And you could hear a uh, host of Wrestling Compadres, Johnny LaQuasto, on a previous episode. Mm-hmm. Find that on ElaboratePodcast.com or wherever podcasts are found, as well as check out all of the shows on the Dragon Wagon Radio Podcast Network. I am uh, so proud to have the Compadres here on the network. Yeah. And I uh, look forward to a lot, a lot more fantastic stuff happening in 2018. I think Jay's getting teary. I am. I am a little bit. I ain't going to lie. Yep. And let's see, got some stuff coming up. Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. We had a taping this past Sunday. Oh, my gosh, it was good. The crowd was amazing. The matches were incredible. Make sure you check your local listings on the CW every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. We might be in your area. If not, download the Fight TV app, F-I-T-E. It's free. You could watch us every single week. And I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy the holy heck out of it. It's it's so much fun. I'm so proud of what we're doing there. Uh, also, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I will be there February 8th through 10. Louisville, Kentucky. I will be there February 15th through 17th. If you live in either one of those areas, let me know. I can tell you how to get tickets. It will be a lot of fun there. And other than that, yeah, I'm going to be gone next week. I'm hoping we can record before I leave because then I will definitely be gone the following week. I've never been to Argentina. Very excited to go. And uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. So, guys, and of course, follow Scott Narver at Scott Narver. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. Jay, yes. Keep chasing your dreams. Yo, you, yeah, you did it. It's Dragon Wagon.